Well, good morning, friends. It is Paul Thompson with my younger brother, Steve Autry. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about that. <laughs> I, I am a younger brother. I've got three older brothers. Uh, Paul's about the same age as my oldest brother. So, yeah. And, and he's always trying to take care of me, tell me what to do. And he never listens. Like the younger brother who we will be talking about <laughs> in depth today in our podcast. I'm so grateful for your time that you join us. And uh, Steve, it's been already uh, really fascinating to see how folks are responding to this Lost and Found series. Mm -hmm. it, it really feels like that this sermon series is able to touch folks in, in places that really invites conversation, internal conversation. And it shouldn't be a surprise because, well, that's what Jesus does. Yeah. I mean, all we're trying to do is get out of the way of what Jesus is saying in the Scripture and allowing the words of Christ to speak to people's hearts as they do. Well, and I think the conversation we were having a little bit earlier is really important. We're going to get into a little more depth of conversation today about this younger brother and about mm -hmm. his motivation, about what he does, how he acts. And, and you correctly pointed out that Jesus leaves a lot of details uh, unsaid. Right. No names. No names, no places, just this general sense mm -hmm. in which he, he says, I, I'm, I'm out of here. And, and I think each of us then are invited, as, as I often believe, and say, we don't read Scripture, Scripture reads us. And what I mean by that is simply that Scripture invites us into this narrative, into this story, yeah, this, and we often put our story into it. This story has a lot of on-ramps for yeah, people. Yeah. So you can, maybe you come on and you know what it feels like to be the father who's been rejected by a child. Or maybe yeah. you know what it feels like to be that older brother who's been judgmental and critical of a younger sibling or other people and certainly so many people read this story and they immediately identify with the younger brother because who I mean and I think this is kind of part of our universal human condition to a degree that all of us come to a breaking point at some point at some time in our lives where we feel like I've got no future yeah, man, and, and, and maybe multiple times over for multiple different mm -hmm. points in our lives. And uh, so we're invited into the conversation today. Why don't you read that first couple of verses there of, uh, of when the younger brother, how he approaches his dad right. and his, how he comes to the decision that I'm done. Re read that for us as we read the words of Scripture. So the younger brother of the two in this, uh, said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in desolate living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. I, I, uh, we've joked about this. I don't know if we've joked on camera about that, but... Uh if I went to my father, my mother, one of my parents, and said, you know, I really can't wait for you to die. Mm -hmm. I, I need you to go ahead and, and give me the what is rightfully mine when you die, the, the inheritance. Well, that probably, that conversation would, would not have gone well for mm -hmm. me and my family. And, and my dad probably would have gone ahead and, and just go ahead and killed me right on the spot. <laughs> but I look at that and I think, uh, what would have been his motivation? What would have been going on in his mind where he thinks, I, I can't do this anymore. I am so sick of this place, this one horse town. I got to get out of here. Yeah. Well, I think one of the things to, to look at in any time we're looking at Scripture, um, or any type of writing for that matter, is the verbs. And the verbs in here are pretty strong. Divided. Mm. What a... What a <laughs> that, we should be able to understand that these days. Uh, but divided, um, gathered traveled, squandered, mm. right? Those are, that says a lot. And, and Jesus is a, a master with an economy of words. He can say a whole lot with just a little bit. So we, we have this, this parable, this story. I, I can certainly write myself. I'm, I'm the younger brother in my, in my family uh, from the standpoint of, you know, I have an older brother and I, I remember being with my dad and my older brother if we were working on the farm, we grew up on a farm and, and, and we were working on a tractor or a fence or something like that. He, my brother was older and he, he would participate in the work. 
Mm -hmm. And they would say, hey, run over and get that pliers. Go over there and get that uh, that tool. Yeah. And I'd dutifully run yeah. over. And after a while, I was like, man, who am I? Yeah. And I get the sense that the younger brother, as, as we recognize in the scripture, the culture of the day would have been when it comes to an inheritance time, the older brother gets two thirds of the possessions, the younger brother just a third. You know, we probably wouldn't but, do that in today's well, culture, well, but that's that spoke volumes. But here's also something within this story. This man has enormous wealth. Yes. Right? I mean, enormous wealth that we can't even really fathom. And that becomes evident throughout the story. He has servants, he has holdings, he has all this stuff. And so the younger brother's also probably looking at it going, you won't even miss that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you Dad, even, you got enough. Yeah, you, got, you, you know, I, I want mine, and I want to go live the life I want. I don't want to be under anyone else's authority. I don't want to be under anyone else's um, control. I I know what a good time is. I know what a good life is, and therefore I'm going to go live it. Um, even, you know, he doesn't stop to think, I didn't earn any of this. Right. Right. But he goes and he... What happens, right? What what happens when he decides that he knows how to be the basically lord of his own life? Because up until this point, it's clear if you live in the father's household, you are a subject to the lord, right? You're, I mean, I'm talking lord of the manor here, right? right. Which does translate into the, our lord. But the father had complete and unquestioned authority in his home. And so it makes me wonder again about the motivation for why the son decides to leave. Does he think he doesn't matter to the Lord of the manor, to the father? Does he think that he doesn't care about any longer about that father figure, about that, that man who is his father, who has done his life? But he decides that I, I can do better. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm sick of this one horse town. I, I have to do something different. It well, had to be a strong motivation right. to compel him I'm out of here. Well, it is that kind of that the grass is always greener yeah. kind of mentality. Like it's got to be better over there. What I know isn't all that great. And sometimes it takes leaving behind what you know to realize just how good it was. Yeah. So then we arrive at this point in the story at which he, he goes. Almost inevitably, we could write this story. You know, a young person has a has a lot of money, has a lot of resources suddenly at their disposal. They don't have the background, the experience, the knowledge of how to handle that. And the next thing you know, it, it is gone. And <laughs> too done. much too soon. Too much too soon. How often have we heard that story in culture where someone, you know, has success early we, in yeah, life? Yeah, we, we've kind of gotten a little bit used to the story of the pro athlete who, you know, young person gets this huge contract and then five years later, they don't have a dime. Right, and we've, we've seen that over and over, or just the pressure of what to do with all of mm -hmm. that. So this- Oh, and you would have had a lot of friends. When he showed up oh, yeah. in that far oh, yeah. country, yeah. and he lets it, he you know, probably flashes the bankroll. Right. Uh, he would have had a lot of new friends. Right? Yeah, hey man, buy me a drink. We're, yep. We'll be, I'll be uh, he, was, he would have been the life of the party, the most popular guy there, and yeah, as long as the money holds out, the friends hold out. And so we get to this point where the scriptures tell us that he, he then squanders. And, and boy, that's a strong word. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about wine, women, and song. He, is, he has played the, quote, good life. Mm -hmm. And he's played it to the point to where suddenly he, he has gone from the penthouse, we would say, to the outhouse. Yeah. And we don't know how long this took. Jesus leaves a lot of um, gaps in this, and I think very intentionally. So you, you can read your own story into this, and you should. But, you know, did it take a week? Probably longer than that. But did it, did it last a year? We don't know. We just know a t some time passed, and what he did with that time was a lot of squandering. Yeah. And so we'll come back tomorrow, and we'll touch a little bit more about what does it mean to, to hit rock bottom. And, and, and I'm going to invite you, I think, to think about the times and places in your life where you know, you've gone again from that spot of, you know, confidence and man, this world is my oyster and, and I'm grabbing it to, oh man, I don't have any idea what I, I'm going to get out of this mess. Yeah. I, I think, 
I, I certainly can reflect on times when I felt like that. Maybe that's a, a human experience. Where is hope when we've hit rock bottom? Yeah. So let's come back to that tomorrow. Steve, right. thanks again. We'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Right, thank you.